Ioli Harper, and I just thought I'd make a video uh, today about a little bit about food storage. And so I would just thought I would ex explain a little bit about why many LDS people hopefully are not too worried about running out of supplies during this coronavirus outbreak where we are all relatively quarantined and, and some people aren't working. In many church services and almost every Relief Society meeting, we have very specifically been told to keep a one-year supply of food and other supplies that we reuse on a continual basis and at least three months worth of fresh water. And um, typically Relief Society for the past however many decades, it's been held about an hour after every church service on Sunday and then recently it's changed to where we have it about every other week. Okay, so that gives you an idea of how many times we have heard this message. I've been LDS since 1999. So that'll give you an idea of how many times I've heard this message about food storage. We were told to do this in case of emergency. It's not because anyone was expecting a worldwide pandemic or epidemic or anything like that, but because anything could happen in our lives to put us in a position where we are without the ability to get resources for our families. And even though we've been living, for, for those of us like me, living in the United States, and it seems like we're in the land of plenty, nothing bad can happen to us. Yes, there are bad things that happen to people all the time living here in the United States uh, personally. And you know, there have been places around the world where we've had earthquakes and we've had earthquakes here in the United States. We've had hurricanes, we've had tornadoes. There have been a lot of things that have caused big floods that have caused serious upheavals in people's lives. And you know, food storage isn't going to fix every problem, but in many cases, it'll help a lot. Now going back to what we've been taught in church and what we've been taught in Relief Society, we have all had this counsel from our church leaders for decades now. Even if we are poor, we are still asked when we go to the store, and this is just a suggestion of how to build up your food storage, um, to buy two of everything that is not perishable and put one aside while we eat the other. Then, of course, we're taught about rotating our food and things like that so we don't end up with rotten, outdated food. I know none of us are perfect, and we don't always follow everything that we are asked to do perfectly. When we live in an apartment, it might be harder to store things long term. When my daughter and I had an apartment, we did get an extra room and... Um, we didn't necessarily store things in it, but that was my, one of my thoughts was that we could store things in it if we had to. Um, but we did store things under our beds. We stored things in our closets um, and basically anywhere that we had extra room. And that was when my daughter was a teenager and I was living in Utah and I had an apartment out there. And, you know, so, since I was a single mom, I think a lot of people made the assumption that I must be really poor or doing really poorly or something people used to come by and try to offer us boxes of food and things like that but I always had a lot more food and I remember one time a man came over from church and brought us a box of food for uh, Thanksgiving and I tried to tell him I didn't need it anyway I told him my neighbor might need it though and then he said well you you put it on her door your your doorstep your, her, yourself and I was all like okay she already had a box there because she went to church with us too anyway um and she had more kids than me too anyway so I so I put it on her doorstep it was a box of, of Thanksgiving stuff to fix for Thanksgiving anyway and the funny thing was she ended up inviting us over for Thanksgiving so I ended up eating a portion of the food anyway but um you know, I, I, I've had people, you know, bring me food and stuff like that when, when 
when I was living in Utah. But the funny thing was, was that I had a closet full of food. I had another closet full of food, like all the way from the bottom to the top. And I had a uh, water supply, I had water supplies in, in the rooms. And um, I, I would try also to keep a supply of things that we use pretty often, like um, shampoo, um, dish soap, and um, we even had toilet paper. And I know toilet paper is a big thing people have been talking about lately. Um, but you know, we, uh, we had that, we had extras of that kind of stuff. And I don't know that we had a year supply of a lot of stuff, but we had a lot to get us by with regard to food and things like that. So that way we wouldn't have had to worry, you know, not about food and things like that anyway. <clears throat> Let me see. Okay. So that was when my daughter was a teenager. Okay, going on with what I wrote. I know our circumstances in life, especially if we are moving from one house to another, make it a little bit more difficult to have a lot of things stored. However, the Lord has always told us through his prophets and apostles in the church that the best place to have a mass storage of food and supplies in this country is in our own homes. You know, they, um, I, I've heard people mention things about the Lord's storehouse. What's the Lord's storehouse? And the Lord's storehouse is yes, our, our church has a huge supply of, uh, of food and things like that. The church owns, um, there, there's usually a bishop storehouse where the bishop helps out people who are poor that need uh, food and resources. And, um, you know, it's like a place where you can go and shop for food. The church uh, has a lot of um different ways that they give food to people around the entire world. And when we pay our tithing, we pay our fast offering. And for those of you that don't know what tithing is, tithing is 10% of your profit that you make from going to work and things like that. And um, um, church members are called on to pay 10%. And then also to pay fast offerings. Fast offerings is where we fast once a month on the first Sunday of the month, and we fast and pray for other people and for ourselves for the things we need. And the money that we have saved from fasting for those two meals, we send it into the church, and that is used to buy food for people who are in need. And often it's people in other countries, sometimes it's people in our own wards and branches. Um, people that just live down the street, and we don't even know who they are, but the bishop knows who they are, and he makes sure that um, people get what they need. Anyway, um, so, but, um, you know, talking about the Lord's storehouse, it came to me uh, several years ago when I was uh, like 10 years ago, you know, I was thinking about it and I thought, well, you know, the Lord's storehouse is anyone on the earth that wants to give of what they have to help other people. And, if you are learning how to uh, take care of your own house and your own home and um, um, have a storage in your own home, then you're able to help out other people. I know that a lot of times, um, you know, people that have gotten help, the food has come right from someone else's house. I know that toilet paper is something that people use a lot. Thankfully, it is not something that we have to eat because then it would be a big problem for people not to have it. However, being without food is a problem, right? I know that there are many people in the church who took the, what the prophets and apostles said seriously and kept a supply of food and are not worried because many of them could po probably last a year on what they've got or at least three months. This is not due to hoarding. It is due to being careful and looking ahead and self-disciplining yourself enough to set food aside and supplies aside that you need or disciplining yourself to buy two at a time of things until you've built up your year's supply. So this is not where you just go, went out one day and just, um, just bought a whole bunch of stuff just because uh, you're freaked out or whatever. You know, it's something that is a way of life. It's been built up over time. Okay, so it might mean going without some entertainment, but at least you got food just in case someone in your family gets sick who is a provider and can't earn money. That's more often than not, you know, going to be the type of situation that you're looking at. Someone got sick, someone lost a job, 
you know, and instead of um, having to rely on other people, you still might need help from other people for things, this and that, but at least you'll have food, you'll have your supplies. It's kind of like having a savings, except it's actually, you know, with real goods that are kept in your house. All right. Or if, if there's something else that happens like this thing that we have going on right now. Right now, we can't buy things in mass because there are a lot of people that need the same things that um, that many other people need that don't have it. So, you know, we've been asked in a lot of stores just to buy one of this or one of that. And um, it's it's because there are some people that are going to go without if everyone just goes in and grabs a whole bunch of stuff. And maybe there are some people that have less money that can't go and grab everything all at once. Right. So um, and then you know, the, the food supply chain that we've got isn't, isn't going to be able to accommodate that in the short term. Um, and definitely not if it keeps going on for a while, but, um, you know, eventually, uh, people are saying that, um, if we just kind of chill out a bit, it'll kind of, you know, go back, go back, the food supply chain will go back to normal and, and we'll have the supplies we need and things like that. Anyway, um, so I'm not, with regard to food storage, what I'm not talking about is, um, all of us just all of a sudden jumping out of our houses and heading over to the store and buying up your supply of food. This is something that is built over time. And, um, perhaps we will learn from this experience that we are having now that food storage is a good thing when we wisely plan it out ahead of time. We will also learn that when the leaders of the church tell us that we need to have a year's supply of food and supplies and at least, and supplies, I mean like, you know, like I said before, things that we use up all the time, um, perishables, and at least a three-month supply of fresh water, we will strive to do our best to heed that. We will be able to not be a part of those who are running around looking for things at the last minute. Now, sometimes people are in that situation not because they wouldn't have had a food storage. It's because they hadn't thought about it or no one had ever presented them with the information. And, while, and when I mentioned, you know, the gospel just now, um, that's part of the things that we we're taught at church is... Um, that it's important to be spiritually minded and eternally minded, but we also as parents and grandparents have the um, responsibility to make sure that our families are taken care of temporally. And temporally means here on the earth right now um, because we need to eat and our children and our families look to us for that support. So we need, not everyone has had, you know, um, um, the information that we've been given. And um, there's a whole website that the church has. It's a portion of the church website. There's a portion of it called Provident Living. And there, um, you know, there are resources that are teach you to help how to build a business even. And there's um, one about how to build up your uh, food storage, um, saving, anything to do with finances, Things like that way, how to how to get your bills paid off, you know, really um, practical things. <clears throat> if you are not LDS and you want to learn more about building up a year-long food storage, you can always talk to the missionaries and they will help you out and point you in the right direction. A lot of them know how to do it and they'll help you do it and um, they can get you in contact with members of the Relief Society too that can help you to learn how to do it. <clears throat> also, you can ask any member of the Church of Jesus Christ and they can get you a mountain of information on how to set up a year supply. And then, like I was saying too, the Provident Living website can show you the same thing. If you prefer to go that route and just look things up on the internet, if that's the kind of person you are, you go right ahead and look that up and that'll give you all the information you need. Let's see, um, okay. And so I just said, and they can get you a mountain of information on how to set up a year's supply of food ahead of time. So hopefully you won't have this situation again where you and your families are doing without. And obviously not everyone is, but um, some people may be worried that they're going to. 
they will give you this information regardless of whether or not you want to become a member of the Church of Jesus Christ or have any interest in any of the teachings of the church. And I remember when I was a young adult, my mom would always give me a hard time about buying two of everything when we went to the store. I became LDS when I was in my 20s and when I learned about food storage and stuff like that, that, like that I started wanting to buy things two at a time all the time. I'd go shopping with my mom and then she'd get mad at me, you know, and she, um, since we were living together, sometimes she'd buy the food and sometimes I'd buy the food depending on who got paid. And, um, you know, she'd be like telling me like, why are you getting two? Put, put, put one back. For me, I felt that it was pretty sound advice. So I wanted to do it and that's, I would try to do it. But then sometimes she'd say things to me like, well, we've already got that at the house. Why are you buying another one? We don't need another one, you know? Uh, it is kind of funny, but, but you know, when I moved out of my mom's house, one of the very first things I did was to start building up my food supply. And it was really, really fun to do. <clears throat> anyway, I don't want to give you the impression that I've always been perfect at it because I haven't. And when I moved from Utah to Arizona to Minnesota, I had no way to bring all my food storage with me. You know, I, all I had was what I could fit in my car. So I actually started eating everything down as the time came closer for us to move. And then, um, not that you have to do that. If you have a way to take it, you know, you're fine. Just take it. But if you can't, for whatever reason, um, you know, that's kind of what I did. And then I had to build up again when I got back. Anyway, so, um, so there are some times when you may have to build it up again, especially if you've moved or something like that, or if you had to use it up while you were going from one job to the next or whatever caused you to be low on money. That may be another reason that your food storage went low was because you um, had a, a loss of a job or just started getting paid less or you got sick and had to take some time off work or, you know, there could be any number of reasons that are similar to that. But at least you won't have to ask other people for help with food and stuff like that because you will be self-sufficient. Perhaps right now at this very moment is not the time to start your year supply, you know, unless you're doing it marginally, like, um, um, you know, just, just a little bit here and there, not, not a lot because the reason is because um, people are being asked not to hoard things. Um, due to the shortage of supplies at the store and a lot of people needing things. But when this is over, um, that would be a good time to seriously consider setting aside a year food supply. And for those of us that are already a member of the Church of Jesus Christ and already know that this is what we are supposed to do, perhaps we can let other people know how to build up a food supply and we can make sure that we have one ourselves. And that includes the other supplies that we need, which we constantly reuse, like shampoo and toilet paper and things like that. You know, and, and, and Heavenly Father, you know, He cares about how we talk to other people. That's one thing that I wanted to add. You know, um, it might be easy to say something like, uh, yeah, you know, uh, I, I try to tell you about the church and you didn't want to hear about it. And, uh, you know, and now you know, look at you, you're not, you don't have hardly the things you need. If, if you hadn't gone with me or, or cared to give two cents of a thought about what I was saying, then um, in the past, then probably you wouldn't be in this situation now because you would have built your food storage up like everyone else, you know, <laughs> or, or uh, to the people that are LDS and already knew about it, like, well, everyone told you all the time, but you didn't want to do it. And now you're in this situation. You know, it's easy to say things like that. But I don't think that that's how God wants us to talk to each other, right? We um, are supposed to share goodness with others. And, um, and he wants us to talk to each other in an uplifting way. So, um, you know, and also he doesn't want us saying things like, well, you know, I'm going to help you and, and, and be a part of this with you just so long as you're, you know, wanting to be a part of my church or something like that. No, that's not what he wants. And I... And um, I hope that those of you that aren't a member of the Church of Jesus Christ, Christ um, of Latter-day Saints, like I am, um, feel good enough to ask your LDS friends 
and and you know um and even if you don't uh want to be lds if you're not interested in any other teachings of the church you just wanna um you just want to know more about food storage you know that's for anybody that's for everybody and um don't feel bad to tell someone look i'm not interested in anything else that your church has to teach i'm just interested in learning about food storage and how i can build uh, one up for myself and uh, anyway, and you know, that also goes for other leaders of churches. There's a lot of churches out there, a lot of churches on my reservation too. And um, uh, taking the time in the future, once all this is over, to teach people about uh, having a year supply of food and things like that, that's a really good thing to add into the things that you teach everybody every Sunday, you know, and um, a, a lot of people... Like I said, maybe they don't want to be LDS or something like that, but uh, learning how to be um, mm, temporally um, self-sufficient is a good thing. And um, anyway, so feel free, anybody, to look at the church's website for Provident Living and uh, get some ideas from there. And uh, thanks, you guys, for watching. Have a great day. Bye.